All right, guys, another month down, another book haul to talk about. So let's go ahead and kick it off. My first one was Daniel Tiger's Neighborhood's Friendly Songs. Is this not the show you guys are here for? All right, let's talk about the books that you'll actually want to hear about. Hey, what's up, bookworms? Another month gone, a new one has begun, and I gotta tell you about the books I picked up in July, because while it's not quite the quantity that I may have done in the past, there are some quite, quite, um, some quality ones in there that I want to talk about. And uh, yeah, the whole thing about the beginning is uh, I did buy that book for my five-year-old, and he absolutely loves it, so <laughs> it counts, dang it. If any of you guys have kids, uh, I think that those and the um, Dogman books, the guy that writes Captain Underpants, can't think of his name right now, the guy who writes the Dogman books, that, my eight-year-old loves those, and my kid loves anything Daniel Tiger, so uh, there we go. So uh, there, the, uh, the kids segment is over for the day, but let's get into what I got this month. First up, since most people don't count digital books in these things, I want to talk about a couple of uh, Kindle books that I got first. And I talked in my sci-fi video, sci-fi video or sci-fi series that I haven't read that I'd like to. And uh, one of the big ones was the uh, Remembrance of Earth Past trilogy. That is the three-body problem. More people know it, but is that by, by Lou Shizen? I believe I'm saying that right. But anyway, I picked up that trilogy because that is something I feel like I would like to... Uh, I've said I want to get more into a little more sci-fi in the next year or so. So uh, that's one that has kind of bolted to the top right next to Hyperion as far as a series that I'd like to start. And uh, so there, there is the uh, the end of all Kindle discussion for this video. I don't really know very much about the series except that uh, apparently Lou is, he is pretty much like it in China. So uh, I'm very interested to see really if the series meets the hype and if, even if it doesn't uh, see quite what generates so much conversation about it because it is very, very popular among sci-fi circles. And uh, I'm just itching to get a little less fantasy and a little more horror and sci-fi on the channel. And uh, that brings me to horror a little bit. Actually, what I want to talk about is a couple things that uh, I got a couple of birthday gifts from viewers. And first one, you guys know that we're doing the read-along right now of Sebastian Day, Day Castell. The Sebastian Day Castell. That's a tough word to say sometimes. Sebastian de Castell's uh, Great Coat series. And one of the ones I had on my wish list was, uh, you know, just Spell Slinger because I really liked uh, the first Trader's Blade book, in, in the first first book in the uh, the Great Coats. So I said, hey, I'll probably end up getting all this stuff. I know this guy's, uh, this this is a little more YA, but that that's fine. The covers are awesome. And uh, I think that he's a good enough writer. I love the way that he writes action that I went ahead and said, yeah. I'll probably end up getting those all. So uh, I, I want to thank you, Ethan. Uh, he is the one who uh, who picked this up for me, and I do appreciate that for sure. Uh, the only thing bad about it is now I've got to get the other five. You know, <laughs> I can't have a book one. No, but for real, thank you, Ethan. I really, really do appreciate that. That's very, very kind of you. Another one that I got, and I came. I don't know if it was accidentally that it came anonymously. Uh, if someone just didn't want to, you know, let me know who it was from or whatnot, but there was no message or anything in it, but it is uh, basically the best, the best collected works of uh, Algernon Blackwood. You know, I'm doing the horror thing this uh, October, and uh, his story, The Willows, is one that I want to cover. Now, this guy apparently. Blackwood. I've never read him before, but apparently this is the guy that scared the pants off of H.P. Lovecraft. So that's called the admiration of your peers right there, because Lovecraft could not say enough about this guy scaring the pants off of him. So I'm interested to see how that goes, and uh, maybe I'll read a little bit more, you know, but uh, this seems like the coolest collection, and it's a cool cover. I mean, who doesn't like a nice Black Panther, like Bagheera or something? Evil Bagheera. I've been watching too many kids' things over quarantine. Sorry. Uh, one more that was sent to me, uh, a, a published author that is a viewer of the channel. Uh, I know his real name, but I'm going to use his pen name here in case he doesn't want his real name out there. I don't know if that's the case or not. But J.E. Mack, and this book is called Damaged Good. And the cover is slick as hell, isn't it? I love it. 
Uh, but uh, I don't really know very much about the series, but he, he came on board with the channel a little bit before I started doing Dresden Files, and he's a big Dresden guy. And uh, he, I think what he's actually told me is he, that he swears he had this idea before Dresden Files was really huge. So I, I don't really know what that I mean, looks. Let I me mean, looks kind of looks kind of anime to me. I don't, I don't know. I don't really know what the series is about, but I definitely appreciate him sending that to me and signing it and everything. And uh, I I will definitely get to it for sure. I mean. He's a viewer of the channel. He knows what my uh, what my TBR looks like right now. Him and Brian Lee Durfee have sent me signed books, and I want to read them, even though both of them have said, no strings attached. You don't have to read it. You don't have to review it, but I want to. I want to. I really do appreciate you guys sending me things. This is very, very cool. And let's move on to that whole horror thing. I know the, uh, the book halls usually bring a bunch of new visitors to the channel that haven't found it before. If you don't know, in October, I am dedicating the entire month to just horror content because I feel like I've really shortchanged the amount of horror on here. If it isn't Stephen King, I haven't done a ton of horror on this channel. So there are lots of new horror series that I want to get into and talk about. Some I've actually read before, and there, but I read it when I was like a teenager and I want to reread them. And other things will be kind of a first time for me. And one of those reread slash first time is I say I haven't read any Clive Barker, but I've actually read The Hellbound Heart. I mean, like everybody else, when I was younger, I saw Hellraiser and I was like, I got to see what that's about. But the thing is, this is, this is like an 80 page novella here. I, I really can't count that as saying, yes, I've read Clive Barker. So uh, I've already said I'm going to be doing Weave World. I uh, probably won't have time for Imagica, but I will if I really like Weave World and I want to reread Hellbound Heart. If I really like those two, again, yeah, I'm going to read Imagica because because of how much I hear about it. But Weave World is the one that kind of uh, got the most votes, I guess you'd say, from people. Even though now people are saying, oh, that's actually kind of more fantasy than it is horror. Well, too bad. You guys picked it. So Weave World is the one that I'm doing in October. But uh, I want to go ahead and pick up Hellbound Heart. I'd like to get his Books of Blood, too. Just because I feel like those those are the best starting points for someone. Like like I always tell people with King is to start with different seasons. You know, it's four novellas. I feel like that's the best, most approachable way for someone first getting into it. So I feel like maybe his short stories might get you kind of used to his style. I don't know. I don't know. I'm I'm, I'm looking forward to talking about Clive Barker just so more fans of Clive Barker will drop in on the channel and let me know these things. Because right now I think I've got one fan that is a that or one one viewer that is a fan of Clive Barker and he talks about it constantly hey Emilio you're awesome and uh, I, I really am excited just because of how excited he is when he talks about them but seriously besides Hellraiser Hellbound Heart I don't know anything about Clive Barker so I'm looking forward to getting back into that also in October this will be a reread this is the best female fantasy horror author of all time Shirley Jackson the Haunting of Hill House is a spectacular book. I talked about it in my classics video that I did or classic books that I love. This one is absolutely phenomenal. And I think I read it last when I was in my early 20s. So I'm very much looking forward to revisiting this and seeing how I feel about it now. I think it took on a new life after Mike Flanagan adapted, uh, adapted, adapted, adapted it for Netflix. And, Talking is hard. Who has a channel like this and can't talk? Me. Uh, but a uh, very handsome addition. I think it's got the, the black stained edges. That's, that's a really nice touch to it. But uh, just a cool little hardcover. Uh, it's, like, it's like $8 on Amazon. And I was like, that's great for a little hardcover like this. But a uh, handsome collection. And uh, I'm very much, very, very much looking forward to revisiting Miss Jackson to see if I still hold her in as high regard as I believe that I will. Next up, and the thing is, is, I've already read this one since it showed up. I wanted to reread Something Wicked This Way Comes by Ray Bradbury. I've talked about it numerous times now uh, in the weekly updates uh, about revisiting this and why I really enjoyed it. And I'll be doing that full review in October, so I'm not going to kind of repeat myself here. But Ray Bradbury, one of the greats, one of the greats. And this is a spectacular story. And I was so happy to revisit it. Or really, rather, I was so happy when I revisited it. And it was just as good as in my memory. Mr. Dark still gives you nightmares, man. Very, very good book. And Ray Bradley. Ray Bradbury. God dang, I can't talk tonight. <laughs> Ray Bradbury is one of the fine. He's actually good at talking. He's actually good at writing and speaking, apparently, because uh, his prose is absolutely wonderful. And uh, it, this just made me want to reread uh, Fahrenheit 451 again, because the guy is a wordsmith. And I uh, really, really enjoyed revisiting that one. This one's a little bit different here, and it is The Hunger 
by Omakatsu. I hope I'm saying that correctly. Stephen King talked about this book when it first came out. When he talks about a horror book, yes, I'm going to pay attention. And here's the thing is I have always had kind of a sick fascination with the Donner Party. If you don't know your history, the Donner Party about this group of people that were, you know, when we were going, go west, young man. And they this band tried to go west and they got trapped in the mountains due to the weather in Nevada. And they had to resort to cannibalism. It's a very, very scary story on its own right. And Miss Katsu here, apparently she takes that story and she basically adds a supernatural twist to it. So I am reading this right now, actually. I'm only about three chapters in. And hey, check this out, by the way. Kind of, kind of breaking it. Finally got my own bookmark. How neat is that? See that? Here's the thing. Anytime you have your own brainchild show up on some merch, and it's merch that people actually want besides you, uh, that's just too cool to me. So, uh, yeah, yeah, patrons are, are, are getting those for uh, that, that level. Uh, anyway, I'm very excited. They're also doing beer glasses and uh, coffee mugs and uh, window decals or stickers. What do you want to call them? Really cool stuff. Uh, but anyway, as for the hunger, I'm very, very intrigued just because of what it is based on because that is one of the most sick stories that you cannot look away from in American history, I think. So uh, I, I've heard mixed things on it, but Stephen King, he used the word twice. He said it was deeply, deeply disturbing. And uh, usually, like I said, when he's talking about, I could tell when it's just, uh, yeah, we want your name on the front of the book, but I can also tell when he actually read it and uh, he actually believes that. And I feel like with that, this one he does. And she's got another one out now called The Deep that's kind of the same thing, but it's like The Haunting of the Titanic or something. So if I like this one, I'll probably be picking that one up. But uh, again, another one I'll be talking about in October and I looked forward to it. This one was a birthday gift, uh, which was actually in August, so I can't really count it in July. But uh, I'm going to do it anyway, just because I don't know if I'm going to have enough books in August to do a book haul video. So I'm probably going to wrap this up now. But uh, anyone who grew up in the 80s, you remember this specific book. And do you know what that is? This is Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark. One of the coolest introductions to horror that anyone can ever have. My very first horror book. This book was so popular among kids in junior high. And it was mostly because of the art. The art was just fantastic. And this collection actually has all three volumes in one with the original art. So cool. So cool. Uh, these stories, it's one of those kind of things that there's so much nostalgia attached to it. I don't know if I could be uh, subjective about this book at all and just say that I love it. Uh, here's the thing is during lockdown, uh, my kids in Cub Scouts. And so we still, they try to come up with stuff that you can do since, you know, while we're still distancing. And what we decided to do for one of them to get him a badge was we were going to have an outdoor camp out. And so I said, well, no camp out is complete without two things, s'mores and scary stories. So I actually looked these up on my iPad because they're public domain now while we were outside. And I read the first three to them and scared the piss out of those kids. And it was glorious. I loved it. It was so good. And that was why it was my kid's idea to get me the book after that. So a really, really cool thing just if you haven't read these, just for fun, it's nothing that's going to scare you or nothing as an adult, but it's really just such a fun introduction to horror. And I think about it, I'm like, how the hell did they have, did they have these at book fairs in junior high? <laughs> it's absolutely some horrifying stuff in here. Very, very cool, though. So super nostalgia, I know. But this, this, this collection, absolutely handsome. Hardcover, all the original art, all three volumes. And it was like... Not expensive from what they told me. I don't know. My kid, you know, you're always like, hey, don't tell anybody how much a gift costs. But, you know, an eight-year-old, he can't help but tell you, hey, it only costs 10 bucks, you know. That's kids for you. But uh, definitely, definitely looking forward to uh, revisiting this. And if I have time in October, I'll add this to the Fright Fest just because I forgot how much I really did enjoy that. Now, we got one more. Something that I admire is the courage of an author to leave their publisher, go out on their own, and handle everything by Kickstarter. And Michael J. Sullivan has been like a master at this. So Sullivan left Orbit, went out on his own, and created Ryura Enterprises to start doing his own books. And every time that man has a Kickstarter, he gets it within like 
a couple of hours they come through and it's just an undying fandom for the for the Ryera series which you might have heard me talk about a few times i'm working my way through revelations right now four of the six books done and i am i love the series quite a bit i, I i've said that on many occasions so what i wanted to do for sullivan for because of the way that he does this is yes he started his own thing but you can still find his books on like amazon or barnes and noble things like that but if you go straight through him he gets all the proceeds and he signs everything for you so i went ahead and picked up the prequel series which was published afterwards which is Ryera chronicles all four of them and so cool he sent bookmarks he signed each book uh i i told you that the guy actually like emailed me after i made the order just to make sure that everything was okay with my transaction and he talked to me there, the whole, there was actually a little bit of a mix up on the address thing is apparently my all my paypal address because they only accepted paypal my paypal address was still to the house i lived in two years ago and i didn't realize it until after i had purchased it and paypal is a real big jerk about that stuff so i actually contacted him and asked him if they could change it but it already went out and I was like, all right, well, let me see if I can get a hold of the people who bought our old house. And he's like, no, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. I'll send you a new one. And he did. He like overnighted it. And it was here in like two days. So very, very cool of him to do that. And again, guys, if you're not reading Ryura, uh, I, I, I really don't know what to say to you because it's just, it doesn't require a heavy commitment or anything. I, I think it's just, when fantasy was fun, it feels like it's something that could have come out in the mid 80s but it doesn't feel dated if that makes sense and it doesn't require like you know a huge database of knowledge to take into this world and it just it has by far in my opinion the best one two punch the best duo in fantasy right now in royce and hadrian and apparently after i finish uh revelations uh he's actually wanting to come on the channel and talk to me so i am very much looking forward to that and picking the man's brain because I love his whole process of how he does everything. He always hits these deadlines that he's got. Apparently, he comes up with a story all the way first. He has his wife be his alpha reader, and she tells him what works and doesn't work. And then he hits his release dates every single time. He gets him to his Kickstarter people early. Just It's the kind of thing that I wish more, more authors had the courage to do. It's really cool cutting out the middle man. And he's just like John Gwynn in that he engages with his audience like crazy. He always says all the time, hey, if you have any questions about the series, email me. My email's on the front page of the book. And it is. And he will respond. Very cool guy. And uh, it's easy to see why he has such a big following in the fantasy community. So uh, such a cool series. And I'm hoping that the, uh, the prequel series is just as good. To me, if I'm getting more Royce and Hadrian... Hey, I'm in. I'm definitely in. So that was my month, guys. What did you pick up this month? What, uh, you know, did you did you bust out the credit card a little bit? Did you get some gifts? Did you spend some gift card money, something like that? No wrong answers. Drop in the comments. Let me know what you got, and I will talk to you guys later.